Rick, good morning to you as well. You know, from the beginning, there was something about that growl in his delivery that spoke to both the pain and the passion. Using that distinctive voice, he became a star in his own right. He became the cornerstone of the Rough Riders, all the while remaining deeply complex, deeply human, even flawed. Perhaps that's what makes him so relatable to the fans. Used to drugs at the age of 14 by one of his mentors. I later found out that he, uh, he, he laced the blood with, with, with the crack. Well, how would you do that to a child? Correct. And, and, like, like 30, you know what I'm saying? And he, and he knew how I looked up to him. Yeah. He knew how I looked up to him, you know what I'm saying? And like, why well, would you do that to somebody who looks up to you? In 2019, he checked himself into rehab, telling his... What is up, YouTube? It's Jay Coffee Talk back with an update regarding DMX. And, um, you know, you heard the footage being played there and in my live stream last night we were all talking and reflecting on dmx and um you heard what they said in that footage there about x the fans all of us you know that love the music that love hip-hop or in, in the case of dmx so many people who aren't even necessarily hip-hop fans love x's music love x and uh, that's what we were talking about is how he was so relatable. You know what I mean? That he was just so real, always himself. You know, we talk so often about music artists not changing up or selling out. And I, I don't believe X ever did that. And I don't believe that X ever changed who he was at all. As far as uh, the person, the, the, the good characteristics that he had. And I, I just, you know, wanted to tap in and make this video and say, uh, you know, that's I feel like why the people love DMX so much. Now, you also heard in that footage there, um, you know, where they were speaking about X, uh, you know, at the young age of 14, being in the streets in a, a big homie, so to speak, that he looked up to laced the blunt and um that's just a horrible thing man and it just kind of shows that dmx always had the deck stacked against him but always worked hard didn't give up and prevailed you know and um right now i just got my fingers crossed and you know saying my prayers and that's kind of wild too the rough rider symbol i believe is almost like fingers crossed almost you know like in solidarity isn't that wild like and we all have our fingers crossed right now and we're all saying our prayers just hoping that x can get through this now as we know uh through the updates that we've seen his family has come and seen him um you so see some of the footage playing in this video the rough riders uh motorcycle club actually came out there and honored dmx um you know outside of the hospital and everything and um I don't know if a lot of people were aware uh, the Rough Riders Motorcycle Club is huge all across the country. There's different chapters. I actually uh, spoke with some of them once um, when I used to uh, work in a tourist area and it was kind of wild. They told me, man, this Rough Riders thing is so big. It's so big all across the country. And at times we all get together for events and it's just a great time, you know, and um with all of this being said, I just kind of wanted to tap in with everyone and see what everyone's thoughts is right now. How does everyone feel? Um, I don't know if anyone is kind of feeling a little conf confused as I am. Um, we spoke a little bit about it in my live stream. Um, if you guys didn't see the live stream, link will be pinned in the comments on this. I'm just very confused how that lawyer put out that bad information. That was is bizarre the more that I think about it. Like, how did he mess that up? You know what I mean? Like with the, someone doing public relations or whatever, all that happens is, you know, a certified individual who's on the scene, who you know to be legit, gives you information and you relay it to the public. So someone gave you on the scene bad information and said that he was off life support. And then I, I don't know, I'm just kind of blown away by that uh the more that i think about it yesterday i guess i was just kind of stunned by all this happening that when that happened um you know because i kept relaying that to people that were saying that like no apparently that that was bad information now i'm really kind of thinking into it more and i'm i'm just i'm just kind of at a loss as to how that could happen you know what i mean
uh, hit the comments, guys, and let me know if any of you guys feel that same way as well. But that's all that I really got on this one, guys. Um, just kind of wanted to hop back on here, reflect a little bit, speak with you guys. Everyone, please comment. New viewers, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Say that prayer for X. Um, you know, as we've stated uh, before, like, if, if anyone can fight through this, it's got to be X, man. This guy has been through a lot of things where a lot of people would have given up. And we know um, in, in that beginning footage that I played for you guys that spoke about him going to rehab uh, after the Fed time, X had been on the straight and narrow and you could see it and he was focused. So um, we know that takes a lot of strength as well. And, um, you know, whatever it's like being in that state, almost kind of in between worlds fighting for your life. We know X is in there giving it his all. I truly believe that. Y'all hit the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys later. We might do another live stream tonight. Like I said, I look to do those lives more like three, four times a week. I'm out of here, guys. Get well, X. Beat this thing, man.